and welcome to another video. Slightly different angle, but if you've seen my vlog, you'll know that's because I've got a chair and I want to sit in it. So I'm sitting in it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, different angle. This might be it from now on. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, today is really exciting. As you can tell from the title of the video and the thumbnail, you'll know why you're here. It's time for the owls. Yes, I've got the printouts. Yes, I've picked my career. It's all so exciting. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, where have you been? Uh, but I will leave the announcement video from G for the OWL magical readathon Harry Potter themed shebang that this is. It's a whole big thing. It's a readathon that lasts for the entirety of April, and I'm excited to take part in it again like I did last year. So it's the owls, the newts, any of the extra credit bits and pieces. G puts so much effort into it so if you haven't heard of it I encourage you to go and check out her announcement video because it is phenomenal. So this year she's gone even further than before and created a whole like prospectus of careers for the magical world um, and I'm as you're probably aware someone who's not into Harry Potter so I'm not as excited about this as most people participating are and I'm still pretty excited about this so that, that should tell you enough but yeah. I've taken a look through the prospectus that she created, all of the careers, see what tickles my fancy. As I don't really know the Harry Potter world as well as most people, I don't know as much about the careers so I just picked one that kind of tickled my fancy and I've gone with curse breaker just to give you an idea of like the effort she's put into the design this is just one of like 50 pages she created but like isn't it beautiful <laughs> so this is the owls that you require for the career the newts which is the august readathon that you require for the career a bit about the career key traits and like a vacancy that's going on as well she's just gone to the extreme which is very her. <laughs> so curse breaker from what I understand of it is exactly what it says on the tin, someone that breaks curses that have been put on things and the owls that are necessary to become a curse breaker are ancient runes, arithmancy, charms, defense against the dark arts, potions and transfiguration. So I've got six owls that I must complete in order to be eligible to qualify as a curse breaker and then at the newts I need to get an O in ancient runes, an O in arithmancy, an E in defense against the dark arts and an A in charms. So I've got a bit to do for the newts but let's just focus on the owls for now. So six necessary ones but of course I'm gonna go OTT and set a TBR for the whole lot so I will go through the whole lot, but let's start with the six that are necessary to me. So I'm going to put this to one side for now. And then we've got the letter with all of the exams and their corresponding prompt. I've scribbled all over this to set my TBR, so it's a bit scruffy. So let's go through the six that I need. So the first one I need is Ancient Runes, and for that I need to read a retelling. So the retelling that I'm going for for Ancient Runes is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kem Kemmerer. Um, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is the Fairy Loot edition that's absolutely beautiful. I didn't have much interest in reading this at all when I first saw it come out but then it was in the fairy loot and I've heard people say good things about it so I'll give it a go and who doesn't love a Beauty and the Beast retelling? From what I can tell it's like a mix between traditional Beauty and the Beast with a bit of like urban fantasy thrown in there because I think our beauty is based in like Washington or something. Yes, Washington, Harper. Uh, she needs to survive the streets of Washington DC and then she gets sucked into Prince Wren's world where there's a curse and, you know, Beauty and the Beast. So that's the one I've picked for that. First book for the owls. <laughs> the second prompt that I need to complete is going to be Arithmancy and for that I need to read a work that's written by more than one author. 
So for this one, I'm going for Lumberjanes Volume 10, Parents' Day, and this is written by, I think it's two authors, written by Shannon Waters and Kat Lay, and then of course illustrated by Amy Satoyo. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've always said with Lumberjanes, it's a bit up and down for me. Hopefully this will be a good one, but it is of course a graphic novel, comic volume even, so it should be a quick one for me and of course in a readathon you need some quick ones to help you get through. So this is going to be my quick read and that is for Arith Nancy, a book written by more than one author. The next compulsory one for me is Charms and the prompt for that is Age Line, read an adult work. Now from my understanding I think Age Line is a charm but I don't know, uh, but the prompt is to read an adult work. And for this one, I'm gonna try and read The Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. Now this was on my March TBR, and that's because I do plan on starting it in March, because if we go back to the Charms extra credit, I completed all five days for that, which means I get five extra days at the beginning of the readathon to start this, which means I can technically start this on the 26th of March, if my calculation there is correct. So this is my adult work. I have loved Sebastian de Castell's writing in the Spellslinger series, which is his YA series, and I'm really hoping I enjoy his adult series as much. I don't know anything about this, like what the plot is about, and I would like to keep it that way and go in pretty blind, because I'm reading this purely on the author, like it's an author pick for me, so I'm excited to see where this takes me. But yes, that is my pick for charms. The next one that I have to read is for Defense Against the Dark Arts, and the prompt for this is Reducto, a title that starts with R, or the way G explained it, like the first prominent word starts with R. So for that one, I'm going with These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rush. Uh, so we're counting rebel as the first prominent word here. I love these green sprayed edges, they're beautiful. Uh, this is like a pirate story and I'm all for that. I've wanted to read this since before it came out, before it came in the fairy loot, because again this is the fairy loot edition, and when it came in the fairy loot I remember being really excited for it and then just not getting to it, so hopefully I'll be able to get to it within the owls, because I would really like to. A revolutionary, a raider, a prince, will fight for their countries, their families, themselves, or face a war that could destroy the world as they know it. I'm excited about this. I don't know too much about the plot, but I know it's piratey, and from the item in the fairy loot it came with like a soap that was based on a flower that dissolved internal organs or something and it was based on something from the book and that just excited me about it even more so I'm really looking forward to reading this one quite a lot. <laughs> the next prompt that I have to do is for potions and that is next ingredient read a sequel and for this I had originally wanted to read Fierce Like a Firestorm by Lana Popovich but I've changed my mind. Now I'm hoping to go with The Last Life of Prince Alastor by Alexandra Bracken. This was ever so kindly sent to me by Bunny. Thank you so much, Bunny. Like, I've gushed about this in my vlog and on Instagram and now now, so I'm really excited about this. I read the first book from this series, uh, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, during the charms, so it seems fitting to continue it in the owls and I, I just want to read it because I love the first one so much and I really hope I like the second one as well and it's a middle grade so it should be a bit quick so that's fun as well but yeah I've loved this. This story follows a little boy called Prosper Redding who has a demon living inside of him and things don't really go how you expect them to go. It's funny, it's twisted, it's fun, I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> and then the last compulsory one for me is for Transfiguration, and that is Sprayed Edges or a Red Cover. And I'm going for Sprayed Edges for this one, and I'm gonna try and read Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Skye. This is the third fairy loot book that I've got in here, so I'm just trying to knock off them fairy loot books while I'm here. But this is like a samurai story. These two assassins in like a feudal Japan type setting, type setting, not based on that, it is a fantasy land, I know she said. Um, 
but I really enjoy Evelyn Skye's writing. I loved it in The Crown's Game and I'm looking forward to reading something else by her and it just seems really like kick-ass. Like there's this boy and girl. I'm pretty sure there's a boy and a girl. Yeah, Sora and Damon and they are like these deadly assassins that can throw blades with their eyes closed and just kick ass. So I'm looking forward to reading this and again I've heard some great things about it and the sprayed edges there are that lovely lilac colour. I'm just excited by this, like the aesthetic of this I find really pleasing and I'm looking forward to the content. So they are all the books that I need to read if I want to qualify as a curse breaker or begin to qualify as a curse breaker, but of course I have set a TBR for the others as well, so let's just go through those quickly. Uh, the first one is Astronomy and the prompt for that is to read a book with star in the title. For this I'm going to try and get my hands on Zodiac Star Force Volume 2. I've got Volume 1 down there. But I haven't read Volume 2 and I would like to because I like the first one and it's the only thing I could think of with star in the title. <laughs> for the next one it is Care of Magical Creatures and for that you need to read something with a land animal on the cover. Now I'm gonna try and read Explorers on Witch Mountain. I've tried to read this in so many TBRs now. I put it in my Polathon TBR, I've put it in a TBR for something else and something else. Like it's just, I keep not getting to it. So I don't know if I will again not get to it because it's not one of my compulsory ones, but I would really like to read this. This is the sequel to um, The Polar Bear Explorers Club and I haven't read it yet, but I loved the first one, that's for sure. The next one would be Divination, and that is to read a book that is set in the future, and for that I would like to try to get to Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles series, and I've recently read Cinder, so it would be nice to kind of stay on a roll with that series, because I'm terrible when it comes to series. I will read the first book and then just take forever to continue with it, so if I get to Divination I will try and pick this one up. The first one was really easy to read, like quick to get through, so it seems like it might be a good choice for a readathon for that choice, for that reason even, because the writing is pretty easy to get through. After that we have Herbology, which is to read a book with a plant on the cover, and for that one I would love to try and get to The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab. This is Victoria Schwab's debut novel that's recently been republished in this beautiful edition and it's got like, do you see it's a bit like a tree? So that is the plant that I'm going with. It's a beautiful cover and underneath is of course got the silhouette that all of her newer releases have. Uh, but yeah, I don't know too much about this but it's Schwab, it's all I need to know so we'll take that at that. <laughs> then we have History of Magic and the prompt for that is to read a book that was published at least 10 years ago and for that I'm gonna try and get to The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This was published in 2008 so it's just gone over that 10 year mark so it fits the prompt perfectly. It's Neil Gaiman, it's quite a diddly one as well so if I get to it I get to it, who knows, but yeah that's my History of Magic pick. And then the final one is Muggle Studies and for that it is to read a contemporary and I don't read many contemporaries at all but I've gone for Giant Days Volume 7. I've been loving the Giant Days comics and they're one of the few contemporaries that I read so if I get to that I'll just pick up another volume of Giant Days. And that's that, that's a big TBR for the month but it's a readathon and you know I'm a sucker for a readathon. I'm very excited to get going with it. I'm really pleased that I've got that like five extra days to start with the charms. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited for it. As I say, if you aren't familiar with this and you've watched this whole thing and thought what is going on, the announcement video will be linked down below from G herself, Book Roast, the host of this whole fantastic thing. She's put so much work into it, so well done, congratulations and thank you to her for all of this. If you are participating in the Owls, I hope you have a fantastic time. Best of luck for you. I hope you are eligible to, you know, take forth your chosen career. I'll see you on the other side of it. Best of luck and I will see you next time. Bye!